On the avenue running by the riverside of Lisbon, we can take one of the special sightseeing trams or the classic yellow tram line 50. Traveling towards the ocean shore, now we're getting further from downtown to the 15th of the April Bridge and Belem district. First, we're getting off right under the bridge to get into a hidden quarter called Alex Factory. Here on the main street, we only see an average looking doorway, which actually leads to Wonderland. Under this giant bridge, we find this unique artist quarter in a former fabric factory. Giving a new meaning to Sunday Market, here we meet young artists and designers with their artworks and their latest collections. Startups, local brands and other young creative people moved into these buildings, and we also find a unique hostel, cafes and restaurants in this interesting industrial environment. After a short break, we're taking a last glance to the colorful bird decorations and we're going on in the direction of the ocean. On the other side, under the bridge, there's the car barn with all the different rams operating in the city. While over the buildings, we can see the giant bridge. Walking along, we find ourselves among residential buildings and we can catch the 70 meters high bridge at the end of the small streets. This neighborhood became a favorite of mine, as just like at the Manhattan Bridge in New York, the piers appear among the buildings in the middle of the streets. Then we can take the tram again to get further from downtown Lisbon and the bridge too. Rolling in front of the monastery in Belém, we're arriving to the center of this district. It's worth getting off right here and going on with the discoveries on foot. We arrived here in Belém by the tram line 15. And now we're gonna check out where the river meets the ocean. But before going on to the shore, first we take a closer look at this unique monastery, which was classified as cultural heritage of humanity in the 80s. Oh my god, how beautiful it is! First we meet this wonderful southern gate. Imagine they just built it up, 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 up and up. Jesus! And it's almost unbelievable that this complex and giant gate was built only in two years with so many details on it. This masterpiece is just a side entrance of the whole monastery, facing the direction of the river, which is running somewhere behind me. And we can get to the riverside crossing the noble empire square. But before reaching the bank of the river, we find a world map made of marble under our feet. The great explorers of the 15th and 16th century departed from here Belém to Africa and the overseas, and here we can see the dates when they arrived to each coast. The Monument of Discoveries was set in memoriam of the centuries of discoveries. The building is 56 meters high and got its shape after the typical Portuguese ships. On both sides we see statues of monarchs, explorers, scientists, cartographers, artists and missionaries. Walking along on the riverside promenade, we soon arrive to the Tower of Belém, which stands on the dry land now because of the low water levels. As you can see, this late Gothic building gives inspiration to artists even today. Then it was built in memoriam of the discovery of Vasco da Gama, and during the centuries of discoveries it was the gate of Lisbon from the sea which defended the city. Well, and literally here you can see where the river and the ocean meet. Although the river itself is so huge that practically it's hard to tell where the river ends and where the ocean really begins. Looking forward you can see mixed waters. In fact, the ocean comes from that direction on the right, and from the other direction there comes the river where those sailboats are coming from. And the fresh water meets salt water somewhere here in front of me. But now let's jump to the other side. Here on this side of the river, we're in Treferia, which looks like a small fisher village. We can travel here by ferry from Belém, which is somewhere on the other side. We can see this industrial building complex even from downtown of Lisbon, and it looks very interesting in this small town behind these fisher boats on the river. 
Next to the palm tree, you can see the silage park connected with huge deep water terminals. Although it's said to be the most modern system in the whole Mediterranean, this whole thing looks quite abandoned for me. Especially if we take a look at it from the other direction. And it's quite an ugly spot here at the entrance of Lisbon. But nevertheless, or maybe along with it, Traferia is an interesting small town where these quiet streets are getting full of life mostly at night. There are live music on the streets at the restaurants then, and we can taste Portuguese seafood specialties too. It's worth taking a ferry to come here for a dinner, because the bank of river looks very nice with a real Mediterranean atmosphere. And if you want to discover this city a little bit more, you can see a nice church further from the river, on the really clean and tidy main square. And there are some Mediterranean trees and bushes here, like this unique pine tree from the Azores. And after we're used to taking ferries, we can visit the last sailing warship of Portugal at another ferry station in Castilas. This old timer, after serving on Asian and African waters, is under reconstruction in a dry dock. This way we can observe the parts of the ship which are normally underwater, while that huge iron gate keeps the water outside. But inside and outside Lisbon we can see more than cultural and historical sites. If you are interested about the ocean coast too, don't miss my upcoming videos. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and join us next time when we visit the point where the ocean and the river meets outside the city.